welcome everybody to another one of our Ask the Champ series. We've got a great one with us today, Jurgen Pearson, joining us from, I believe, in Halmstad, Sweden over there. Jurgen, first of all, let me welcome you to USATT's Ask the Champ interview series. Thank you very much. It's nice to be here. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, a privilege and I'm happy to join this gang. Well, it's certainly our privilege. We've had quite a streak of great players and historic players in table tennis on this series. You, of course, are a former world champion, uh, uh, individual world champion, four-time team world champion, seven-time Olympian. And uh, when you won the one world championship in 1991, it was against your countryman from Sweden, J.O. Baldner. And I'm going to start right off the hop with, I come from the hockey world. I'm not a table tennis guy. And I, in, in the hockey world, we love the Swedes. The Swedes come with the best attitude, the best conditioning for such a small country. Why is it that Sweden creates so many great athletes? Yeah, it's oh, that's a tough question. But of course, it's uh, the nation. I mean, we grew up with a lot of different sports. You're allowed to try. You can test hockey, soccer, ping pong, handball, skiing. Everything is possible. Yeah, you go to a club here. Yeah? And there is a lot of people just working there because they join it. They have a lot of, uh, they like it, I mean. So many, they work for free yeah, in the clubs. So you come there, they take care of you. And often it works out really good for Sweden as a country. It's quite easy to try all sports here also. That's a big advantage. You're just telling us that you came from an open water swim there out, it sounds like out maybe in the ocean or then got back for this interview right here. So it sounds like the weather is nice there in Sweden and people don't realize that in the summertime, it's actually a, a beautiful place to visit. Yeah, in the summertime, it's perfect. It was yeah, last week was midsummer night. It's a special uh, occasion in Sweden where we eat some um, special fish yeah, and drink some schnapps, you know, so it's a big party, big celebration, but of course, this year it was little calm. We are not allowed to have so big, uh, many people gathering yet. So it was the first time that it was really different. But it's you know, nice here. Yeah. The weather, I look outside, it's a blue skies and it's 28 degrees here. Yeah, so, but the water was only 17, so that was not that warm <laughs> for me. I like to have over 20 when I'm swimming, but it was okay. Well, Jurgen, of course, you've played some great matches in, in your career, and many of them were against your countryman, J.O. Waldner, and including uh, 1989, I think you went to the finals and world championships and ended up beating him in 1991. What was it like to have a countryman in uh, a sport like table tennis where really the head-to-head -head battles between the two of you were really for the title of the entire sport? Of course, it was uh, it was both good and bad. I mean, to play the big fine, as the, I mean, both me and J.O. said many times, of course, you want to beat uh, not the countryman. It's more easier to play uh, against some other guy in the final, in the big finals. But at the same time, we had a lot of advantage uh, with each other, of course, with the practice, of course, yeah, when we could practice a lot together and... Uh, we learn from each other, I mean, yeah. So that was the big advantage. And we are both really stubborn players, yeah. So we always <laughs> wanted to win, yeah. So, yeah, but it was, it was good, yeah, for both of us. And the whole Swedish team, I think, took advantage of that, that we were so many good players at that time. Well, Jurgen, I'm going to turn you over to a guy you know well, Sean O'Neill, who's the high-performance director here at USATT. And I, I know Sean has a couple of questions teed up for you. Great, Jurgen. Um, first question that I have is knowing your teammates from J.O. or to Eplet or Eric and Tikan, did you view them more as rivals or teammates? And how did you balance that relationship with all those strong egos? I think for me, it was more personal like teammates, yeah. But of course, we knew that we were also rivalry. We were we could play big finals and like this, but without each other. I mean, we were practicing so much together, so we were more working as a big team. That was our big advantage when we, especially when we beat China. Then when we speak, go back to '89, yeah, because the whole team were working on this to try to beat them because they were dominating at that time, and we went there many times. We were eight to ten players, yeah, competing a lot, yeah, and. So I, I see it more, we were a team, yeah. So when you would play in, let's say, the national championships or the European championships, would it be fair to say that the European championships was so much more important to all the players individually? 
No, actually not yet, because before uh, it started already with, always with team events. Because, uh, you know, Sean, you, we were playing always World Championships, also it started with team. So that was the first schedule yet. And also you could build your self-confidence during team, yeah? And we often played really good at team events. So then you got the confidence when you went into single and doubles. So, of course, the first step was always the team. But after that, of course, the concentration. And then suddenly... We were working as a team, and then we knew that we could play against each other in World Championship for Europeans and like this, yeah. But especially, and, you focus first on the team event, and you build self-confidence there. Gotcha. So when you would play against a teammate, and you wouldn't have a coach in either corner, for you personally, were you comfortable with that, or did you wish you had a chance to have one of the national coaches in your corner? No, I was comfortable with that because uh, I knew the other play. We practiced so much together. So I, you knew exactly how you're going to play. And sometimes, of course, the other guy was only better. Yeah, But tactically, that was not the big issue to have a coach there or not. Because we were quite used to play a lot. I mean, I grew up like playing a lot by myself also Yeah, when I was playing so many tournaments. So sometimes you were also playing for yourself and no, no coach there in the corner. And what age did you find that you needed to actually, was it in the cadets or even mini cadets where you were forced to play without a coach and kind of build your own ability to do a game plan or to figure out the opponent? No, it was more in the cadets. Sometimes when you started to play, you played so many, you know, the system is sweet. You play a lot of classes, of course, yeah. You played juniors, you play uh, 13, 15, 17, like this. And sometimes... There was not coaches enough yet to uh, be coaching you. So, so then you learn to play by yourself also sometimes. And it was good. I mean, it was uh, good for the knowledge. You had to think by yourself yeah, and take some own decisions. So along those same lines, knowing that you're from Homstad, which is different than the Stockholm group, Stockholm tended to play a lot of tournaments, literally a tournament every single weekend. And in Homstad, it seemed like there was a little bit more focus on the bigger tournaments, especially the nationals. What would you say is a nice balance to how many tournaments a month you should play as a junior? Should you play as many as possible? Or is it better to maybe work on some technique for a while before you put it into play? Yeah, it's a good question. Because these days, it's, I am happy that I could play all these tournaments. Because actually, Sweden was very special with that. We could play a lot of tournaments. And I could play a lot against a lot of different styles. Some older people, some younger, and like this. Yeah. So I learned to play against all kind of styles. And also they had different rubbers and everything, yeah? So at my time, I thought that was really good, yeah? But today the game is a little different. So you need to practice a lot also, of course. Yeah. The, the game is more powerful. And with your physics, you have to work much harder with these things, yeah? So if you can compete as a junior, yeah, we say maybe two or three weekends is good. I think that's good, yeah? To play super and then you have the practice because i mean when you're in the practice all it's one thing but of course when you come out there to play other players you need to see where you're standing and maybe oh, sometimes you lose sometimes you win and you you learn from both i think it's important super i'm gonna hand you over to our national team captain tom feng for some questions then he'll send it back and i have a couple of personal questions afterwards so go ahead, Tom. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Thank you, Sean. And hi, Jurgen. Thank you for joining us today. So I have three questions. So the first question is, uh, what were your favorite trails to do as a junior? My favorite, one more time, the favorite. Favorite drills. Favorite yeah. drills, yeah. <laughs> okay, it was... Uh... As, as junior, favorite drills. I, I did one exercise which I loved uh, a lot. Yeah, was to play one top spin each corner, and then they could play to my backhand when they wanted, and then I could hit my my smash from there. So that was my special uh, exercise. What I did uh, when I was junior. So I believe that exercise got your backhand so good, right? That's right. Yeah. That's the top secret. No, it's no secret. But I, I developed from that exercise because sometimes I was late and I had no choice. I had to just hit the ball, yeah. And then I took decisions by myself sometimes. Maybe the coach was not so happy always, but uh, it was working good, yeah. 
That's good. That's good. And uh, how much time did you practice on uh, serves and receives every day? Serves and receives when I was junior, you mean? Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, service. Uh, I mean, it was always in the exercises. Of course, you did around. We did six exercises when I was junior, mostly, and then uh, at least two or three was momentum with service and receiving of this. And then I did some extra service also. Uh, some yeah. Be, sometimes after the practice. Sometimes before. Yeah. But I, I think I should have done much more, more service practice because I, I didn't have, I had a good service, but not that good. I was better on receiving. Got it. Got it. And the uh, last question. So you had a trademark backhand smash as a player. Uh, what important shot do you see as being critical to master with the newer equipment? I think today you have to have both backhand and forehand and play with a spin on the ball. I mean, because you don't have the time to run so much. I mean, at my time, I could play more forehand all over the table. But today, you don't see. You have to be good. And uh, the, the changes between backhand and forehand, you use a lot of uh, spin, uh, uh, topspin on the ball. So that's really important today that you are quick in the movements between backhand and forehand. Thank you. Thank you. Work Ryan. hard. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Okay, so Jurgen, I'm going to just go back a little bit into your history. And I was fortunate to go to two tournaments that you played rather well in, the 1989 World Championships and the 1991. Forgetting the number of medals and what color they were, which tournament do you think you played better in? And what was the reason for that? Ooh, eight. Actually, 89, I thought I going to win. I mean, I, I won six. I played fantastic in the team event. I played 16-0. I didn't lose one game. And we won the title there. And then in the singles, I played before I played Valde in the final. I won six single matches. And I beat four Chinese from round two to round six. Yeah. So, I mean, at a three, four, no, round three, three, four, five, six. I beat four Chinese. And normally at that time, when you beat four Chinese straight, you're normally a champion in the world, of course. Yes. So, but then there was one Swedish guy waiting. Yeah. But that final, I thought I'm going to win because I was really good 89. Yes. I was, that was, I was, that's why I was so disappointed when I lost 89 because I thought maybe I only get this chance to win one time. But then, of course, when I got the opportunity 91, I was really, I thought before the final, this is, uh, I must win this match because I cannot lose two time in the World Championship final. But I was really, I was quite nervous before the game because when you play Waldner and he have the title and he's really relaxed, I was so afraid that if he get a good start, he will play totally relaxed. Yeah? And then it's so difficult to play against him. So for me, my main target there was to get a good start. And I got that, yeah. So, but... Actually, I thought 89 that I was even, uh, that I'm going to win everything. Do you think going into the finals in 89, having all those wins, especially over the Chinese, maybe created a little bit extra pressure or maybe even relaxed you a little bit too much? And then comparing that with 91, really focusing on a good start and not so much the outcome was maybe the difference? Yeah, yeah, it could be because when I, the finals, 89, I, I came down directly 0-2. So, of course, that was tough. But then I came back to 2-2 and then I thought, now I got him, yeah. And then I went out in the fifth set and, of course, maybe, it's always easy to say today, but maybe in my own mind I relaxed a little when I went out to that fifth set but because I was so happy I came back 0-2, 2-2, yeah. And then Valne was really good in the start. I, I think he had 10-1 or 10-2 directly. And then I, there, there was no chance. Mm -hmm. no, it seems similar. So, of course, I, so like you say, like 91, then I, I really knew it's so important to get a good start. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Super. Um, so you're also known, in addition to being world champion in singles and team, like Mark said, to have won three major fair play prizes in the 88 Olympics, in the 89 World Championships, a lot due to the team. And then also in the 96 Olympic qualifiers. 
how important are those awards to you when you compare them with other trophies and medals that you've won? No, for me, it's, I'm really proud. I often try to speak about it because it, uh, fair play has always been an issue for me. Uh, it has always been, it's very important in all sports, I think. I love to see when it comes to fair play. It's so important that you that you're winning with fair play that that for me in my heart it's much it feels much better it was never a question to take some points or what another guy see but i like this uh, when all other, when i see other sportsmen also and sports women do this with fair play it always brings some special memories also for me but of course i'm really proud of uh, yeah all all this uh, yeah the prizes i got fair play prizes Super. And now as the new Swedish coach for the men's team, what is it going to take for your country to get back into the finals and compete against China again? Yeah, it's uh, a lot of uh, hard work. <laughs> it's not, not, it's not, uh, not so many dif uh, difficulties. It's hard work, but all so, of course, believing. You have to believe that you can beat China because they have been dominating so for so long time now. So they are really strong and good. But I think the, mo the main thing is to believe. And the rest of the world must believe it's possible to beat them. Like we did in the 80s when we, beat, we lost a lot. But in the end, we beat them. And I think that's also the key point now. Yeah, You have to believe that it's possible to beat them. Awesome. And this is something I will try in, in my group now of players to get that. I'm going to hand you over for um, our final questioner with Virginia Sung. Oh, yeah. Um, so my question is, um, do you think if American, if we have a professional league, do you think the Swiss will come and play our league? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think for sure. Yeah. I mean, uh, that would be fantastic if you could start up something like that. I think a lot of players in the world would love to come because to to play in America. I mean, if yeah, I just I like I love sports. I follow. I look NBA. I look NHL, and I look uh, yeah, American football, baseball, and uh, ice hockey, of course. Yeah, with all, uh, all other things. So, it, and when. I sit and watch TV. Of course, I get jealous. It's unlucky that we don't have uh, table tennis uh, clubs or a league in uh, America. Right. I mean, that being American is the uh, biggest market in a, in a sport and it's so mature and there's no reason for table tennis for being one of the most popular sports in the world that doesn't have a professional league. You know, we have to somehow professionalize our league to help our players to get better. And then, you know, inviting more top players to our countries to, to you know, increase the level of play here. Yeah. And yeah, um, yeah it's important. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and now you are the national men's team coach, and is a, I mean now is a COVID, we're all in this uh, lockdown. But in the future, that um, we should consider a exchange program. Of course, you know the Swedish level is on average is much higher uh, than than American boys, but still, you know we would love to have some joint camps. You know, send up players to to play with with your players. Yeah. Of course, that's possible. I often speak to my friend Stellan Bengtsson. You have a Swedish guy, there, a former world champion, Stellan Bengtsson. And he, he is a fantastic coach and ha have a lot of knowledge about uh, table tennis. So, yeah, uh, of course. But also to work between the borders, it's good. I mean, like you say, to, we can come there and maybe some... We have you been having uh, Kanak. G Kanak, have you been a lot in Halmstad to practice? Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. I think Kanak is in he, Germany he, right now. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's not now. Yeah, but before that, he was in Halmstad. Yeah, that's where he got good, of course. <laughs> <laughs> no, I no, no. A... <laughs> they make a good, they make a good work in Germany also. But he was in Halmstad for a long time practicing. Yeah, but he's a really good. Uh, I say kid, yeah, because he's not that old. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. I mean, he's our star here. And then we have, uh, yeah, but I think we have a Canucks father here too. Arun. Hey, Jorgen. Like how are you? Something? Hi, hi. I'm fine. Yeah. I'm fine. How are you? Good. Good to see you. It's been a while after uh, Budapest. Yeah. 
been a long yeah, while. Yeah, a long huh? time. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. The time flies sometimes too quick, unfortunately. <laughs> when the you years know, are flying. Uh, <laughs> did an interview just recently, and they asked him, "Where would you like to live in the future? Your best country?" And guess what his answer was. I hope it's the uh, Hamster Sweden. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was yeah. Sweden. <laughs> no, no, but I, I knew I, I knew he he enjoy a lot here. He got a lot of friends also, and of course he he's a great kid also. So he got he's easy to work with, and also he got a lot of friends here. I think so. Yeah, it was perfect. Yeah. He, he's you all very welcome. Yeah, good to see you. Yeah, good to see you. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Jorgen. You know, we definitely you know, welcome you here to the States. And um, yeah, we just can't wait for this is whole thing's over so we can really, you know, celebrate our sport again. Yeah, it's time. I hope to be there next year. I mean, you should stage World Championship singles here in Houston. Yeah, that's the plan. Yeah, but I don't know how it works now. But the plan is still, yeah, I think, yeah, to host yes. uh, World we're Championship. Gonna host we're going to host the World Yeah, we're going to... Right, we're gonna host one way or another. <laughs> so yeah, we'll yeah, no, we yeah, I know. yeah, we 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 all knew the times so are a little uh, strange now. So it's not. We have to wait and see. Only it's not much we can do. I mean, about this uh, pandom pandemic. Yeah. Right. So we have yeah. to wait and see. Yeah. Hopefully, yeah. it starts. Uh, we can start. Yeah, twenty twenty one. Get back to quite normal. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. And I'm going to pass over to Mark. Yeah, I see Yasna is joining. Oh, is Yasna here? Well, hey, hello, Yasna. Yasna is here too. <laughs> yeah, I saw yeah. a picture there only, but no questions. <laughs> Yasna, I don't got a question. Yeah. Go ahead and throw one out if you got one, Yasna, right now before we close it out. You got, so I got one on the line. If not, Jurgen Pearson, I want to thank you very much uh, yeah. for co joining us on the Ask the Champs series. I want to thank you for what you're doing with Kanak Ja as well, because as yeah. he climbs his way through the uh, international rankings, we're going to look back to you in uh, Halmstad, Sweden, as uh, being a big part of that. And we want to welcome you to come over to America as well. I know you've been here before. You're actually completing the trifecta for us here. You're the third person, uh, the only three, uh, that have uh, played in the table test in the Olympics seven times. We've had on the show Zoran Primorats. We also had Jean-Michael Safe. So you're completing the trifecta for us. So you have been here before in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. What was your experience like when you came over to the States and played at the Olympic Games in Atlanta? Of course, I had uh, big expectations for the Olympics then, 96. I was really good shape before. And now, of course, that was only my third one, yeah. So I, I was hoping for medals there to win single or double. And when you get the chance to play Olympics in America, especially in Atlanta, it was it was nice, yeah. But it was not a good uh, Olympics for me, yeah. So I have really, yeah, I'm not happy with how I was performing there. And often when you see back in Olympics, if you perform okay, the Olympics were better. When, but when you didn't perform well, oh, that was not that good Olympics. Yeah. So, but it was nice. It was really nice. But I had a lot of expectations when I came to that Olympics because I was in really good shape. But uh, unfortunately, yeah, I did some uh, big mistakes there. Yeah. Well, so it was not working out. But it was nice. And um, yeah. And next time is Los Angeles yeah, yes. coming up. Yeah, 28. Yeah, but. Maybe a comeback there. <laughs> it looks <laughs> no, like you're no. in the condition that you can actually do it, uh, or at least no, no. in 2021 yeah. in Tokyo. Yeah, in Tokyo. No, I will be coached there. Yeah. So, yeah. There you go. Uh, That's a lot safer. Yeah, a lot safer, yeah. <laughs> and hopefully maybe coaching in uh, 20, yeah, 28 also. Or well, we in some way I will come to L.A. That's for sure. Well, you're always invited, and uh, we are actually hoping to hope our national, host our nationals in Las Vegas in December. If you're not doing anything in December of this year and want to come over and do a couple exhibitions with us, you're more than welcome to join us in Las Vegas. Thank you very much. That sounds good, yeah. Hopefully the traveling is okay in December, yeah. Then it would be, uh, yeah, it would be really nice to it join. It would be fun to have. But then I have, to, then I have to practice a little yeah. I, I, That's I, the I, unfun I, part. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I start right now, then. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sounds like you already did it. You got your swim in at least. Jurgen Pearson, we yeah. want to thank you very much for your time on our Ask the Champ series. Great having you in. You're always welcome in America, and thanks for all you do for table tennis. 
Yeah, thank you. And uh, yeah, keep the spirit high then. I know you're uh, working hard and trying hard with this corona. And uh, I keep, uh, just, yeah, be strong and stay healthy. And thank you. Thank you. Take thank care. you. Yeah. Take, Take care, care, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.